three young men were taken from their simple home village and conscripted into the army of Tamerlane. They fought long and hard, and they were all battle-weary. The war had been won, and all they wanted to do was to return home to their simple village and live a peaceful life working the land. So they set out for home and of course their travels took them through rather wild country. In such a place they decided to rest for the night and they found themselves a little safe niche and two of them went to sleep while the other kept guard in case they were beset by wild animals or robbers. He who was sitting up keeping watch was called Feroz and he'd made a little fire gathering sticks to give a little comfort through the night and so he sat by the fire enjoying its warmth when all of a sudden he saw coming out from the trees a being and at first he was going to jump up and take out his dagger to protect himself but then he saw that it was merely a dervish in a patched work cloak and the old dervish approached and they greeted each other in the traditional style and the old dervish said may I find comfort beside your fire and of course Feroz agreed and the old dervish asked him where are you going where have you been so Feroz told his story that they'd been at war, Tamerlane's war, and they'd, weighed, they'd won. But all they wanted to do was return home and lead a peaceful life. So the old dervish said, let me give you a gift. And he took out from his bag a woven cloak. And he said to Feroz, when you put on this cloak, you will have any wish that you make granted. After some conversation, the night passed, and Feroz was about to waken his friends and tell him his story about this magic cloak, but when he turned around to waken his friends and then again looked for the dervish, he was gone. But he very quickly told his friends what had transpired through the night. They just laughed at him, said he'd been sitting by the fireside dreaming. But Feroz put the cloak around his shoulders and he wished for some gold to help them in their travels. And within moments, there in front of him was a little pile of gold. Now his friends, quite taken aback, and said, please, please, make some for us too. So of course they did. So they set out and they were rich. So they decided, of course, that they wouldn't go home now they'd go off and enjoy themselves and that's exactly what they did. They went off and had a fine time, bought themselves fine clothing, horses and had a fine old time. But of course, you know, as is the way with these things, they got tired of their traveling and indulgences. So Feroz decided that he would just make himself a palatial house and they would stay there and enjoy themselves. So 
put on his cloak, and sure enough, it was manifest. But you know how these things go, servants and abundance of food and women and all of those things. They soon got tired of it. They decided they'd go on some travels again. So they set out. And before too long they came to another kingdom and there was a huge palace. They decided that they, that they would go and introduce themselves, feeling now uh, very resplendent in their robes, of course. Everything had quite changed from the simple young fellows that set out to war. So it so happened that their the daughter of the king saw these three resplendent young men riding up on their steeds and came out to greet them, of course, bailing herself, as was the custom in those days, and giving them hospitality, asking them questions about where they'd been and what they'd done. And, of course, one of the questions was, where did you get all of your wealth? Well, the one thing that the dervish had said to Feroz when the gift was given. Don't tell a woman, because if you do, it will be the worse for you. Now, somehow, you know how these things are. Feroz had completely forgotten that. So this guileless and beautiful young woman, when she posed the question to Feroz, well, where did you... Well, of course, out it came, the story of the dervish. <gasps> she said, please, will you manifest me some rubies and I'd like a diamond <laughs> ring? <laughs> well, of course, it was done. Well, you know, she wanted it. I want that cloak. So, being a smart and wily young miss, she devised a plan. So, you know, of course, what she had to do to bring it about, she seduced him. And then, in the meantime, she'd gone off and ordered a cloak to be made exactly like the one that he had. And so, she exchanged it. Well, after they'd been given hospitality, it was time for the young men to move on, and so they did. But when they got on their way and they tried to manifest what it was that they needed, it didn't work. So immediately, of course, Rose realized what had happened, but what could he do? There were only three of them. They, if they went back to the palace, they'd be beset by the king's soldiers and... So he tried to devise a plan for himself, but nothing kind of came to him. But then turns up the dervish. There he is. He said, what's happened, my son? So Feroz tells him the story. Oh, he said, well, take this trumpet of Iskander. When you blow this trumpet, A company of soldiers will be made manifest. You'll be able to siege the palace and get back your cloak. Well, Dervish disappeared, of course, again. Burroughs blew the trumpet. Sure enough, a whole company of soldiers on horses were right there. But it was night time not the time to besiege the palace. So they decided that they would wait the night. But you know how these things are. Word got into the palace to the princess. 